Hello and welcome to the Linux command line video series. In this video, we will look at how to use tools to perform logical acquisitions. The basic tool that's on every Linux distro is CP, which is a utility designed to copy one or more files or an entire directory structure to another location. In this video, we are going to cover other commands that may be helpful for the logical acquisition of files and directories. rsync is a more advanced copy command as it can copy locally or to and from another computer. Another great feature of rsync is that it has a file transfer algorithm that reduces the amount of data copied by only sending the differences between the source files and the existing files in the destination. This is a very helpful feature both in the system administration world where you can use rsync for backups or in the forensics world where we need to obtain logical copies of data. The simplest usage of rsync is to specify rsync and then a source folder and then a destination folder. And what it's going to do is that it's going to synchronize the source folder to a folder named in the destination. So in this example, I'm going to do rsync dash av space slash lib space dot. The dash v option for rsync is for verbose. So it will tell us what it is doing. The dash a option for rsync is for archive mode, which is similar to that of the cp command where the modification timestamps are preserved amongst other properties. In this example, because the lib folder does not exist in my home folder, rsync will create it. The syncing function of rsync will see any files that have changed from the source folder and the destination folder and only copy those that have changed. So let's go ahead and test this by making a change in the slash lib folder by adding a new file. We're going to use the touch command to create a new file called new file. So we're going to do sudo touch of slash lib slash new file. So what this is going to do is create a new empty file in the slash lib folder called new file. Now if we up arrow to go back to the rsync command, what rsync is going to do this time is look between the source and destination folders and look for any changes. And the only change that has happened is that there is a new file called new file. So as you can see, for the dash v options, rsync actually tells us that it detected a change in the slash lib folder. And so that's why the new file is the only one that it copied. Archiving is useful for creating a copy of data onto a tape or other permanent media for long-term storage. In the forensics world, archiving imaged data to a master copy is fairly standard process. Another good usage of archiving is for the logical acquisition of one or more files and directories. There are situations when you will not be able to image an entire drive for the information that you are interested in. This could be for legal or for technical reasons. In this case, logical acquisition is your best option. The tool we will be using is called tar, T-A-R, short for tape archive. The tar command has four basic modes. You can create an archive, extract from an archive, append to an archive, or list the contents of the archive. Let's start with creating an archive. The option to tar is dash C for create. Then we're going to add the dash V for verbose so that the tool tells us what we're doing. And then the last option we are going to specify is dash F, which specifies the tar archive file. Since we are creating a new tar archive, let's put it in our home folder and call it init.tar. So the command we're going to type for this example is tar space dash C V F space init.tar slash etsy slash init. So what this is going to do is that it is going to create a tar archive named init.tar and what it's going to put into it is everything that is in the slash etsy slash init folder. So once it's done, you can see that it's put a number of files in there. Let's take a look at the resulting file, 
with the ls-l command. So you can see it's one big file. Now let's append some more files to the archive. Let's use tar-rvf space init.tar space slash etsy slash wireshark. When it's done, let's take a look at the file listing of the archive with the tar-tf space init.tar. And now we can see that we have two different folders, right? The etsy slash init and etsy wireshark and their respective files. Finally, let's see about extracting files from the archive using the dash x option. So we're going to specify tar dash x c f space init dot tar. Here we see that the results is in a new folder named etsy that was created. It is important to point out that by default, tar will extract into the folder where the command is being executed. So if you have existing files that have the same file name as in the archive, those existing files will be overwritten. So I recommend creating a new folder that's empty and then you cd into that empty folder before you extract your tar files. That way you don't risk overwriting any existing files. Another archiver is the 7z command, which is popular because it has a high compression ratio and its compatibility with Windows. Much like tar, you can add, extract, and list the contents of the archive. Let's start our example with adding a non-existing archive which 7z will create. So we're going to do 7z space a, the command for add, init.7z, that's the name of the archive that we're going to add to, and then the contents is going to be slash etsy slash init folder again. So once we get done, let's go ahead and do an ls minus l to take a look at the file. And now let's take a look at the file listing of the archive. So you do 7z l for list and then init.7z and we can see that it has a folder with three files. Now let's append some more files to the archive. We're going to do 7z space a space init.7z space slash etsy slash wireshark. Okay, and it's done. Let's take a look at the file listing of the archive with 7z l init.7z and we can see that it has the two folders and their respective files. Finally, let's see about extracting files from the archive using the x command. So we'll do 7z space x space init.7z space dash o for output file and then without the space init-7z which is the name of the folder that we want it to create the extraction into. And once it's done, we can do the long listing format to see the resulting archive files. So we do ls space dash l capital R space init dash 7z. So here you can see the extracted archive, which is exactly what we put into it. All right. So that brings us to the end of this video where we learned about logical acquisition. We learned that using the rsync command is a big step up over using the cp command for its remote copy capability and its delta transfer algorithm. We also looked at the tar and 7z commands to create archives. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.